it's great just to be um, to be somewhere where you don't need to try and be anything or be anyone. And when I came to the Balance You training, that was um, it, that was so weird. <laughs> I'd never experienced it before um, because I spent my whole life desperately um, trying to be someone and trying to work out what that someone was and what I should do and how I should be in the world and sort of creating this identity and this image and this personal history and and then trying to convince everybody that that's who I was and to convince myself that that's who I was and it was always a struggle it was always a struggle because I could I could never quite pin down who I was you know I had different ideas about what kind of person I was and what kind of things I liked to do but the problem with that was that they were always changing um, so sometimes I sometimes it, I, I just felt like really sociable you know it's, I felt like you know I just want to be around people and I love being around people and and sometimes I was really sociable and you know you can be at a party and just be chatting with everyone and da -da 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 and it's all really easy and enjoyable and so then yeah you know, okay oh, well, I'm obviously quite a sociable person and then the next week you can go to a similar party and and I just would just feel like really in this big crowd of people and I'd feel really lonely or like really alone and like I couldn't really connect with anyone and I didn't really have much to say to anyone and um, I just wanted to leave or I'd have different strategies of sort of dealing with that social awkwardness you know having a drink or three or however many it took or you know different ways of dealing with the situation and so then it, it would be obvious to me well no you're not a sociable person you're obviously you know somebody that likes their own company and I'd then go off and find somewhere quiet probably somewhere beautiful in nature and I'd, I'd be on my own and really enjoying the nature and it'd be wonderful and I'd be oh, so so happy to be alive and this is so beautiful and then I'd wake up the next morning in this beautiful nature and be really lonely you know and I'm where I'm, what am I doing here on my own this is all completely meaningless and so well I hold him I'm, I'm a sociable person actually and so it was this constant moving between these different identities and I had lots more that was just two kind of obvious extremes that I I, tr I tried to I tried to be those you know that that kind of person and, and it was always a struggle because it was it like I said it was always changing and this is a, a really key insight into um, the nature of our mind and the way that our mind works and to recognize in your own experience first of all that everything that you're experiencing is continually changing so you can look in your own experience and, and just just to acknowledge that simple fact so the thought that you were thinking like a minute ago like, like w where is it where did it go you know you were probably thinking about something um, but but where did that thought go and you can see that everything in your experience is changing it's a it's a dynamic flow of experience um, and a term that we use in the balance view training is data and it, it just it's that in itself is a huge relief just to say that everything I experience I can just simply term data like I don't need all of these complicated conceptual frameworks and ideas and belief systems to understand my experience because you know that's just complicated and the more I learned about the world the more complicated it got because the more terms of reference I had to try and understand it so just to say that everything I experience is data and it's a stream of data a data stream it works really well and that it is always changing there's no way to hold it in place so you, you can't equally you can't hold on to any thought emotion or experience so it's just completely impossible as I'm, I'm sat here you know I'm suddenly I'm hearing the birds over there or I'm um, experiencing something in my body maybe I'm feeling warm or then there's a thought about you know, what am I going to say next or it's just this unpredictable flow of experience 
So what we're beginning to see here and in our own experience for ourselves is what is the nature of our mind and how does it work? Not based on other people's ideas, but looking at our own experience in a really clear, relaxed way. Um, so to have this idea or this term data was really helpful. It just simplified everything. And the reason it simplified everything was because when you have the context of your experience, no matter what it is as being the basic state, the open intelligence, the awareness that is essential and is the essence and is at the root of all of your data, all of your experience, and you recognize that for yourself, then everything gets really simple and clear. And if you stop thinking for a moment, and you notice what remains. So in that instant of stopping thinking, there's a bright alertness. There's something that's aware of the next thought when it arises. And the thought might be, oh, I can't stop thinking. But just for that instant, what you do is you give yourself um, just an opportunity to recognize that there is something that is aware of everything that's going on. And so the term we use here is awareness or open intelligence. They're synonymous. They mean the same thing. And when you recognize that whatever you are thinking, feeling, or sensing, it is the same unchanging open intelligence that is always at the basis, that the data are continually changing. But what makes you you is not any of the ever-changing descriptions. It is this open intelligence, because that never changes. Now, how do we know that's true? It might sound nice or it might sound whatever, but how do we know it's true? Well, we know it's true because there's a very simple um, test and practice that you can take away and see whether it's true for yourself. And for me, that was really key. I didn't want to um, just take on board another dogma or a belief system. I wanted to know for myself. And so the, the test is in short moments, repeated many times. Just stop describing everything and see for yourself if open intelligence is naturally present. And again, open intelligence is simply the intelligence that is looking through your eyes right now. As we heard in the video we've just watched, it's what, it is what's looking. Open intelligence is what's hearing, what's sensing, what's experiencing, what's thinking. It's the same intelligence no matter what the thought, the sense or the experience is. And when you repeat these short moments, what you begin to see is that it is always there and inseparable from whatever you're thinking, feeling, or sensing. So the thoughts and the emotions and the sensations, the data, are the dynamic energy of open intelligence and they're inseparable from it in the same way that the breeze is inseparable from the air or the color blue is inseparable from the sky. So it is in our experience that we get to find this open intelligence. And so in that way, nothing needs to change. We don't need to have different experience or different thoughts or emotions to recognize what is primary in our own experience. And the reason why this is important is that, um, well, first of all, you can stop living a life where you're continually seeking one kind of experience which in my case was actually just feeling comfortable with where I was, enjoying my life, thinking that when I'm with people and that's overwhelming and I have social awkwardness or anxiety, that I need to be away from people. And when I'm on my own and I feel lonely and I want to be with people, running towards people and social engagement, that kind of game, that kind of seeking after an experience that is different from the one I'm having just stops completely. And in these short moments of recognizing open intelligence as my actual identity, that which never changes, then I can just begin to really relax and see that I don't need to try and be anyone. I don't need to try and create an identity or an image or a... I don't need to do anything. I can just relax and be me. It's just so wonderful. I don't need to try. I don't need to effort. I don't need to prove. I can simply relax. And this is such a beautiful way to live because in that relaxation, then I find access to the best of me. Then I find access to this incredible um, clarity of thought because I'm not caught up with all of my thoughts about where I should be or what I don't like or 
what's going on for me, actually my mind is wide open and clear like a clear sky. And when I rest as that clear mind, then everything is seen clearly. I can respond with warmth and ease and openness to the situation that I'm in. I can see things much more clearly. I can be much more creative simply because I'm allowing that um, incredible creativity of mind just to be focused in a way that can be of benefit to myself and others. Rather than focusing and using that same energy on trying to manage my experience. So this is the power of one short moment. And this is what you get to test out in the Balanced View training to see um, if this is the case or not. And so when I came to um, my first open meeting, I was interested, otherwise I wouldn't be there, but I was also quite sceptical. Um, but but I, I was open enough to test out these short moments and to, to repeat the test as I went throughout my day. A and it was amazing, it was incredible. I was really surprised actually at the, the, the way that this worked and just how potent something that seemed so simple was. And um, I think in terms of love, I do love in three minutes, um, I just, <laughs> I think that previous or prior to the training, I had so many ideas ab about love um, and love in an intimate relationship and love in general. And in a way, this is a sort of perfect example of using our mind in one way to try and work out what love is and what do I need from love in an intimate relationship or in any relationship and how, sh how should that look, you know, what do I want from that, what, you know, and trying to work that out and again the problem with that was that those ideas were always changing and the circumstance was always changing and um, the, the person that I was with m m might be changing, um, the person might be changing but the way that they were being would also be changing. And so trying to navigate life in that way, trying to work out like conceptually or intellectually you know, what love is and how should I give it and how should I receive it. It, it, was just, it was just complicated and I never really felt sure. And sometimes it felt like it was going well, but then the other person would say or do something that wasn't in alignment with my ideas about what love should look like. And then that was really difficult. That was, could be really painful or really confusing. So, well, what do I do then? Do I, you know, do I need to adapt my behaviour? Or, and it's just this constant um, game of never-ending adaption to what I think things should look like, including love. And then through applying the practice of short moments and also using the rest of the support, and particularly the Twelve Empowerments training, where I got to look at what these ideas I had were and be really specific about them, so that they weren't these vague things, but I could write them and list them in a really, um, really clear manner. So I could see what are my ideas about this topic, about love, about death, about sex, about um, like everything. What are my ideas about me? What are my ideas about my body? What, what are all these things that I've just taken to be so fixed and real? And yet they're always changing all of the time. So maybe they're not as fixed and real as I thought they were. So well, let's get to see what they are and how they've maybe limited my way of understanding and living and relating. And so with love, what I found is that the more I relax and allow myself to be as I am, the more I see that I don't actually need anything from anyone. That in that short moment, there is this great completion. There is this recognition of this natural perfection that isn't dependent on the fleeting or the passing data stream. I used to think it was dependent on having positive data, positive experiences, but, but then it would shift into something negative. But when you recognise that the basis of the positive and the negative is the same open intelligence, and you begin to rely on this, then the dependency on having the descriptions a particular way just relaxes and softens and relaxes and softens. And then we tap into the real love. The, the real love that isn't dependent on anybody, anybody or anything. It's the love that is the basis of everything that we can really tap into at any time. 
It's unconditional love. It doesn't depend on any condition. So th this is real love. And then practically, all of the relationships are naturally enhanced because we feel able to give that love, not expecting it to be given in return. And this is, this is a complete shift from me, for me, from putting conditions on my love all of the time. <laughs>